Okay, so here we have a figure that shows functions f and g, and we want to find h prime of 2, and we're given that h of x equals f of x times g of x. Okay, so here we just have to make use of the product rule, because remember that if you have a product of functions, that means if you want to find the derivative of h of x, that will just be the derivative of f of x times g of x plus f of x times the derivative of g of x. And so when you're trying to evaluate it uh, at a specific value, you just have to evaluate it or basically you know, solve it for x equals 2, so to speak. So h prime of 2 will be equal, equal to f prime of 2 times g of 2 plus f of 2 times g whoa, whoa, prime of 2. Now the question is, what are those? What are these values going to be? Well, we just got to look at this graph and make sure we know what we're talking about when we're talking about derivatives, and that's slope. We're looking at the slope at x equals 2 of the function on the function f and at the function g. So we're looking at f prime of 2. When x is 2, we're looking over here on this graph, and you can see that the slope is up 1 over 2 or up one over two, yep. So it'll be one half times g of two. g of two is simply the, the y value when x is two, and that'll be um, right over here. So that'll be at, that'll be one. So one half times one. And then we look at f of two. So f of two, is going to be the y value here, and that'll be one, two, three. That'll be a three. That point is two, three. So plus three times g prime of two. And then so we just look at the slope when x is two on the graph of g. So basically over here. So the slope looks like we're going down two to the right one. So it looks like the slope is negative two. Then we just evaluate that. So it looks like that'll be negative six or one half minus six or negative five and a half, which is going to be negative um, negative eleven half. So the answer is D. Twenty six. Okay, we want to find the limit of the natural log of e to the three x plus x over x as x goes to infinity. Okay, so this is an example of where you're gonna have a, um, an indeterminate form or like a form that, you know, is not, you know, intuitive, like, cause if we put an x into both, or we put infinity into x's, you're gonna have infinity over infinity. We have an, with, with what we call an indeterminate form. You can't really, you know, you can't really figure out which one's gonna be bigger or smaller. Like, what is this number exactly? So what we do is we're gonna use L'Hopital's rule you know, L hospitals, kind of how it's spelled. L hospitals, L'Hopital's rule. So what that means is you just take the derivative of the top and divide it by the derivative of the bottom, but you take them separately. You're not using the, you're not even gonna be using the quotient rule. So the derivative of the top will be using, you know, the natural log function. So it's gonna be the derivative of the inside, which will be, 3e to the 3x plus 1 over whatever that is, over the inside, over 3, over, over e to the 3x plus x, all over the derivative of the, the denominator. The derivative of the denominator is just 1, so you just get 1 like that. But now you have this to deal with, because if you you plug in infinity again, you're gonna end up again with infinity over infinity. You're gonna end up with the indeterminate form again. So all you have to do is keep on going. You just keep on taking the derivative until you get something that works out. So we take the derivative of this and take the derivative of that. So we do L'Hopital's rule again. So the derivative of the top, we'll get nine e to the three x over 3e to 3x plus 1 
And then, you know, we try to, we plug in X equals infinity again, take the limit again, and we're, gonna, we're still gonna get um, infinity over infinity, but you can probably already see what's gonna happen. You can already see it's gonna, it's gonna power down. So we're, let's take the derivative one more time. Using L'Hopital's rule again, the derivative of the top here. Oh, I hate squeezing it, but it shouldn't have wrote so big. So that'll be 27 e to the 3x over, this one will go away. It'll just be over 9 e to the 3x. And then the e to the 3x will cancel from the top and bottom, and you'll just have 27 over 9. And that'll just be 3, and so your answer will be C. All right, 27. So we have the graph of f prime, the derivative of the function f is shown here. Which of these must be true? So f is continuous in the open interval a to b. Well, if you can see the derivative is continuous, you know, there's no holes, there's no points of discontinuity. So it would make sense to, for the function to be continuous. That would be the only way this could work. Second statement is saying f is decreasing on the open interval. Okay, now this is kind of one to kind of this is a statement to trick you because you know you see the, the derivative graph is decreasing, it's going downward, but that doesn't actually mean the function is decreasing because from here to here the derivative is positive, and from here to here the derivative is negative. So actually, up to let's say like this, up to this point right here. The function is actually increasing. The function is actually going up. It just, it just, the amount it goes, the, like the steepness of its increasing is, you know, is, you know, basically leveling down, but it's still increasing up to here. And then after that, it decreases. So this one's false because it's not decreasing the whole time. It's increasing up to here or at this point here, then it decreases afterward. Third statement, the graph of F is concave down in the open interval A comma B. Okay, let's think of what it means for the graph to be concave down. When the graph is concave down, you know, it's looking something like this. Now, what does that mean about the derivative? This means that the derivative is decreasing because when it's concave down, the derivative is first, you know, positive, like over here, then it becomes zero, then it becomes negative. So the, the, when it's concave down, the derivative is decreasing. That's also when the second derivative is negative, but the derivative is increasing. So when you look at this graph, indeed the derivative is decreasing. It's going from up here to down, it's getting less and less. So this is actually true as well. So then one and three are true. So then the answer will be C. Twenty eight, an isosceles right triangle with legs of length s has area a equals one half s squared. At the instant when s equals the square root of 32 centimeters, the area of the triangle is increasing at a rate of 12 square centimeters per second. At what rate is the length of the hypotenuse of the triangle increasing in centimeters per second? Okay, so um, there's a couple ways to go about this, but um. We want to find a way to rewrite this in terms of the hypotenuse. So let's let's just draw like a picture of what this triangle could look like. Um, or if we have hypotenuse right, if we, I mean, if we have an isosceles right triangle, it means two of the sides are equal, and we have a right angle. This will be the hypotenuse. These are the legs of side legs. So this is S, and that's S. And so we, so then we have s squared plus s squared equals h squared. So if we solve this for h, we'll get two s squared equals h squared, or essentially h will be equal to the square root of two times s square root of two times S.
Now, why do I do that? Because now we can write the area as one half. Instead of the S squared, we're going to put H as, okay, well, actually, that, that, that's, I saw, continue solving this for S. I, I had a, made me a little mistake here. Let me divide, so let's divide both sides by the square root of two. So we have H over the square root of two. That'll be S. And then let's put where S is, we're gonna put H over the square root of two. That's squared. And then so the area is essentially H squared, square root of two squared, is two, two times two is four. So it's one fourth H squared. That'll be the equation for area in terms of the hypotenuse. Now, since we're trying to find the rate at which the length of the hypotenuse of the triangle is increasing, let's differentiate this with respect to time. So dA dt will equal one fourth times two H times dH dt. If you use chain rule, because we're dealing with the function of a function, Again, so um, now we basically wanted to solve for the h value here. And then we can pretty much get our derivative, our dh dt. We want to find dh dt. That's the goal. So let's, let's clean this up a little bit. Um, wait, let me go up here. da dt 2 over 4, 1 half h dh dt we know d we're told that da dt we're told that the area of the triangle is increasing at a rate of 12 square centimeters per second so from here we can go 12 is equal to one half and let's find out what h would be at this point so s is the square root of 32 so if S is the square root of 32, using this equation, H will be the square root of two times the square root of 32 or the square root of 64 or eight. So now I just substitute eight for H. This times DH DT. So basically at 12 equals four DH DT. Remember this is just four. Divide 12 over four. Three will be d. Three will be dh dt. And that's my answer will be b.